I enjoyed going to school and I had this one teacher in the fifth grade that was a good Christian man. And we got to say prayer, even though we weren't supposed to, in school. But it was that teacher, Mr. Justice, who had an impact on my life. And I was like, well, hmm, maybe, maybe I want to be a teacher instead of being a doctor when I grow up. Little did I know how God was continuing to work with his grace and his love and his, uh, his nudging and his pushing. And you see, <laughs> wow, where am I today? <clears throat> I had no idea that I would be where I am. Get ready to turn 30 years old preaching about God. See, when I step back and let like, God do what God wants to do, you know, God's going to do what God wants to do, even if we don't listen to God's call. What God has and wants to do with that call.
sit down and humbly stand up. He is familiar with all of our ways. He knit us lovingly together in our mother's wounds. He is with us at all times. He weeps when we weep. He's happy when we're happy. Jesus obeyed 
Whatever you think of Jesus, remember this. His heart was a willing and obedient heart. He always did what his father directed. There was no hesitation, no questioning, no circumventing. Only immediate action. As God calls you, God will fulfill His purpose in you. He will equip you. He will enable you. He will protect you. He will accompany you. Are you obeying His commands? That He is with you and will protect you. Are you sharing the word? He will accomplish his purposes no matter how the people will respond. How about be real with you for a moment? I don't know where us as the Methodist Church is going in the future. But if you've been listening to the news and reading the articles and the posts that have been made by the Methodist Church, and I'm here, my Methodist Church, and our Western Carolina Conference. It's kind of sad. But I want you to do one thing for me. No matter what happens, no matter, you know, if, if there's a, I don't know, a split or whatever it is, I want you to begin starting this very moment. To pray for our denomination. Amen. And to pray that God's will be done, whatever it is. And I hope that you'll lift me up in prayer. And I've told some of you already that, you know, it's kind of a, whew, a hard and difficult time right now to be going into the ministry. But I know that God has already gone ahead and working things out. Yeah. And it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay because I know that God is going to make it okay. You know, and I know that I've been called to do what I'm doing, and I'm going to keep on doing it, and trying to live each day to the fullest I can, and to love everybody, and just do what I'm doing. Amen. Because I know that that's what I've been called to do. And none of that that's going on is going to defer me. From doing what God has called me to do. Because my God knew me before I was formed in my mother's womb. And set me apart. Little old boy from Trouble, North Carolina. And set me apart to do His will. He set you apart, man. And knew you as well before you were formed in your mother's womb. Knows you from how many hairs you have in your head to the bottom of your your feet. That's everything about you. That's hard to grasp and understand. But I serve a God who knows all things and is so worthy to be praised. Young people, I know the journeys. Just start with your song. For those of you who just graduated college, Twilight and others, probably trying to figure it all out as well as you journey to the next steps. Whether or not, man, I'm going to go on to graduate school or I'm going into the workforce. It's a lot of decisions that have to be figured out sometimes. But young people, God's got you. And you have a loving and supportive church family that has got you as well. And going to help you through this thing that we call life. Because you remember when you stood before the church and said your vows, what did you say that you were going to do? You're going to support them and love on them and help them when they maybe have gone off the track. Thank you, Lord. I'm ready to go do something. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm ready. I hope that you'll come on the journey with me. 
It's good to see everybody here this morning. I just have to share something with you. I was <clears throat> at an annual conference, and I can't remember if I've told you all or not. Forgive me if I've already told this story, but... Some of you may know uh, Fred Engel. You may know Fred Engel. He used to live in Asheboro. Um, probably, it's probably been seven, eight years or so, but... Uh, Fred Engel uh, knows some of you. He mentioned your name. I can't remember who he said, but he knows some of you in here. And he was just telling me and sharing with me how wonderful this congregation was. He's like, Edward, you have been sent there, and he praised the Lord for that because they are wonderful people at St. Luke. And I can already feel that love. I know that I'm appreciative of you. And I may get a little bigger, you know. I get food this morning, and I'm thankful for you. But that's okay. I know that I'm loved by you all, and appreciate it for all of you. I am so appreciative. I hope that daily that you lift me up in prayer, and as I do you as well, lifting you all up in prayer. 